Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing, uh, well, going to take a look at the LLC. Okay, actually I don't need that. There's enough light in the room. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the LLC and voltage, uh, so software voltage reporting accuracy on uh, the X470 Gaming Plus. So the first thing we need to do is hook up some voltage read points because uh, I'd like we need to validate that the software is reporting that something that is uh, that is true. So to do that, we're just going to solder a bunch of wire to the back of the board. And I've just realized I don't have a bunch of wire prepared, <laughs> so that's going to be great. Um, eh, it'll work, work out. So here's the board. I don't have the CPU in the board, and uh, basically that just makes things easier because if you have the CPU in the board, it'll measure the resistance of the CPU, which is like a couple ohms, and that tends to make uh, things unnecessarily more difficult. So let's flip the board over, and uh, this board seems to be, uh, well, I have a suspicion that this will be really easy because we have this, uh, these, uh, I don't know if you can, well, I, I don't know what the camera, Fun fact, um, my soldering area is like a mile away from my monitors, so I have no idea what the camera is capturing right now. Um, but these two pads right here, um, those look like they might be for vCore. And if they are, that's super convenient. So we're going to do a basic little check that they are for vCore. So I'm just going to take the resistance from the leg of one of the vCore output chokes to the positive side of that, and that's zero. So that's basically what I expected. So that tells us that is definitely, that is definitely vCore right there. So that pad right there is going to be vCore. So that's super convenient because that's massive and easy to solder onto. But I'll also solder some wires across the actual output filtering capacitors of the vCore VRM. Um, the ones actually right by the VRM, uh, just for the sake of showing you why it is that you want to measure from behind the CPU socket and not from over here. Because if you measure over here, you get a very different reading from what you get over here. So, um, yeah, and we're going to also need a ground wire. Now, I personally, like from my testing, um, if you m take your, if you just grab a random ground somewhere on the motherboard, it'll be within 10, 20 millivolts of if you actually run a proper ground line. So it's not going to make it that inaccurate. But, um, but for the sake of the doing things correctly, I will run a proper ground line today. Uh, box cutter we have, wire we have. So let's go with red for the correct one. I'll also do, actually I won't do the SOC VRM because that's, uh, well, it's a bit fiddly and honestly I'll just take the reading off of there. Um, the SOC VRM doesn't need to push that much current, so it generally, like your voltage accuracy on it is generally pretty good because uh, V-droop is uh, relative to output current. It's not relative to, uh, like, uh, well, yeah, it, it's relative to output current, so I'm not too fussed about it. Um, how much wire should I use? Let's just go with that. Just needs to be able to, like, I need to just be able to reach it while it's inside the board, so go, get the box cutter out. This is going to be dull as hell, probably. Go, oh, that's stripped. Strip this one. There. Now I'm going to do something really stupid. I'm going to tin it over the board because there's not enough space on the desk. Don't ever do this. Because uh, this is a great way to drop uh, drip solder all over your motherboard. So, yeah, and I'm, I can't even, like, I'm crammed into the edge of my desk here because of the stupid tripod. Oh, there we go. So that's nice and easy. Um, let's see. So, damn. I, I, I got to be honest with you. Having, a, having the camera going while I'm soldering just makes me so damn nervous for some reason. Ah, uh, okay. You've done this a thousand times before. Okay, not may maybe not that many times, but I've done it a lot of times. Yeah, okay, there we go. That was easy enough. And uh, let's just uh, go in there and get that wire hooked up. Come here, you stupid pile of... Um, go. Up. And yeah, that's not going anywhere. 
Now, if you wanted to uh, install this permanently right now, this is a, uh, well, basically, if this wire at this point touches ground, um, it will destroy the wire very, very quickly because the VRM is capable of supplying at least 100 amps, okay? I'm not sure where this one actually trips its over current protection, but if this goes to ground, uh, th this wire is getting overloaded. That's not really a uh, question. Um, so a lot of times I would include like a resistor in series with the wires to just sort of give, give, your, uh, to give myself that safety of I can't short um, who knows how many amps to ground, but uh, uh, well, I'll just be a little bit more careful today <laughs> with the wire and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just do it this way because I can't be bothered with uh, doing that much more work. Where's the black wire? There it is. So now we're just going to do the other pad because that's obviously a ground, if you don't believe me. Um, you can just stab that and then stab uh, the casing of some output. How's that not? There. <laughs> I was just about to feel pretty stupid. Yeah, that's ground because the casing of your outputs is grounded. So. Yeah, you can also use screw holes. Um, these M.2, actually these M.2 holes are really convenient when you have the, if you have the motherboard on a test bench, you can just throw a probe straight through one of those. And then you can use the other end to, to measure anything. It's actually just, just a side note. <laughs> um, there, so let's get some black wire now for the ground line. And yeah, that length's good. This one doesn't, this one's not risky in any way, shape, or form. Because uh, obviously there's not going to be any voltage across this one. Um, well, on this one. Let's strip that. And now the sun decides to go down. I, I swear, it's like, I, I can't win. <laughs> I really can't win with the filming conditions. It's never going to work out. I just realized I didn't prepare the screw terminals I wanted. Oh well. Oh. Got that stripped. Okay, well that's a bit long, but that's cool. Um, and so is this end actually, but we can trim it down. We there we go. It's done. Trim this end. I'm going to smoke myself with wire here. There we go. Yeah, this is really easy. I like that. Don't have to solder onto the tiny little ceramic capacitors. Though those aren't actually that hard to solder. What is hard to solder to is the, say, the legs of chokes. Those, those really suck. Um, so there we go. There we got our voltage read lines. Um, I'm just going to twist these together so that they're not, you know, all over the place. And I'm going to use a different color wire for the V core off the um, off of the main output capacitor bank. Go. These are being a pain to twist. We should. This is mostly just for wire management because I don't like having loose wires everywhere. There. Okay, well, that's fine. And now we'll grab one off of these uh, capacitor legs, which uh, I'm not going to actually flip the board over to figure out the polarity. I'm just going to use the multimeter again. I'm good. <laughs> I guess that right off the bat. So, yeah. So ground to that leg is like several kilo ohms and rising. To this leg, it should be zero. It is zero. And then this leg to the red wire is zero. So that's that's the core. And actually, just to make absolutely sure, um, against a choke, it is zero. So that is the side I want. So let's grab a white line. 
just going to pull that from there. Yeah, that's long enough. Oh. Come here. This is why I can't have review samples. <laughs> Because they want them back, and if you send it back with like soldered wires, or, well, with obvious soldering damage on it, then it's not going to be, a, it's not going to go well. Go. Ta-da! Let's get that tinned now. That's a bit long. Let's get the other end. It doesn't really matter. And which leg should I use? Oh, I'll just use this one. Oh, this is going easy. Yeah, this motherboard doesn't have a very ho uh, very heavy power plane. Um, on do like doing this on GPUs or something sucks so badly. Because you, you just put the soldering iron on and nothing happens for ages and ages. Because, like, there's a massive copper power plane. Um, would you all complain if I didn't bother to run a ground reference for that one? I, I guess somebody would probably complain, so I'll pull up ground as well. Um, honestly, I'm putting so many unnecessary wires onto this, but... I, worth it, right? Come on. Up. Oh. Box cutter. Starting to think that this video might turn out to be too long after, because I do want to go and like mount the board up and then, then show you the actual test results. But these are yeah, I'm stripping these way too long right now. In the name of speed. <laughs> there we go. Come here, and which side? That side. The other end. Yeah, but this board drops a lot of voltage across the power plane, um, which is why I also know it's so, like, why I'm not surprised that it's, uh, it's easy to solder to, because <laughs> there's no copper in this. Um, so if you measure the voltage across these output capacitors, it is super high compared to what the CPU ends up getting, because there's a ton of voltage drop across the power plane. So, yeah. Though there are some low-end boards where I've seen, like, well, th this seems to drop, like, 100 millivolts across the power plane at 100 amps. So that's like one milliohm of, uh, yeah, that's about a milliohm of resistance uh, in the power plane here. But uh, there's some other boards I've seen where it was like 150 for the same uh, throughput. And I just desoldered that. That looks really sketch. Let me just tweak that over again. Yeah, okay, I'll call that good. And last we'll do, I mean, we could, I don't know. I don't really want to do SOC off of the, I mean, it's not hard. I've done it. <laughs> it's, I've done much, I've, I've soldered like this size SMD capacitors to the back of a GPU core. So it's not hard. It's just, I don't really want to bother. Okay, come on. Actually, I don't need to run a next another ground reference for that. So you know what? I will. I'll do it. I'll grab SOC behind the CPU socket as well. Ta-da! That's uh, that's all hooked up now, and let's do SOC. So. Same thing as always, one one probe on the choke, one probe on a capac. Well, I'm just gonna guess. I'm gonna think. I think these. I am really lucky. 
<laughs> I am like super lucky. I did not think that would be that easy. Is that actually convenient to do though? I'd say it is. That's not exactly a bad spot for a capacitor to be on. Now the problem with uh, soldering wires to these uh, multi-layer ceramics is if you, uh, uh, if you solder the wire onto them and then you pull on the wire a bit, it's going to rip off the cap of the, like, the, the actual metal, ca like, the, um, not the actual capacitor itself, but, like, the metal cap at the end of the capacitor, you can rip a chunk of that off. So uh, I don't really like hanging wires off of them because uh, it's just a great way to break them, essentially. Um, yeah, that's long enough. This is why I don't throw wires out. <laughs> Saves me cutting time if I, I happen to have one that's the right length for what I need to do. Hop. Can just do it over the back plate. Go the wrong side again. That's nice and tinned now, and uh, I'll shorten, which side will I shorten? This side. There. Comes this kind of fiddly bit. Um, okay. Well, let's pray that both of those were what I'm looking for. It probably were. Actually, wait, no. I'm not going to do that. That's that's a pretty bad idea, so I'll just... There, undo that. Check both of them. Because they're just like... Well, um, I guess I'll show you a close-up of what, I, what I've done. Because I want to hang it off of two of them at the same time. So I want to check that those two are actually connected. Because otherwise, I'm screwing up really badly. Come on. Now there's flux all over them and it won't measure. Okay, you know what? I'll just measure off of the choke. Okay, yeah, they're both the same thing. Cool. So, that was just completely unnecessary, but it's best to be safe. Um, I'd be be pretty stupid to kill a motherboard just because uh, I want to save a couple seconds. Well, actually, it wouldn't kill the motherboard. It would kill the CPU once. Well, I, actually, I have no idea what it would do, but it would not be good, that's for sure. <laughs> I'd rather not find out what happens when, when you have a voltage regulator trying to put out 1.2 volts hooked, uh, shorted to a different voltage regulator trying to put out 1.4. Um, And now we just don't pull on that one, and uh, everything will be good. I'd really like to have some kind of stress relief on that, but uh, we'll, we'll just have to go with this. So that's everything hooked up at this point. Um, I guess I'll show you a close-up, because uh, test out how good the autofocus on my new camera is. So there. So blue wire is uh, SOC, red wire is V-Core, black wire is uh, ground, white wire is V-Core but from the VRM, and black wire is again ground. So that's all hooked up now, and let's throw this on a test bench, and I've just caught the lav mic on the chair. So there, I'll throw this on the test bench, and we can measure the whole thing. Um, just going to switch over the cameras. I am so happy to have two webcams now. It is it makes this so much easier. Bam! I know. <laughs> Magic. No more having to mess around with mounting the camera onto a different tripod and everything. So there. Get the CPU installed. Oh. Ta-da! Um, that's a Ryzen 7 1700. I don't yet have a 2700X. Um, I'm not sure. Like, here's the thing. I'm kind of... What's really annoying um, is that, like, I tell some, like, I have, well, I have contacts who are like, yeah, we'll totally give you a CPU, right? 
And then two weeks later, no CPU. Six months later, still no CPU. And at that point, it's like, should I just go buy the CPU or not? And that, that's really kind of what's going on with the 2700X right now. Um, I've asked for one, and I don't know what's happening. So, yeah, and I'd rather not buy a CPU and then get sent one at the same, like, also get sent one. Um, just because uh, that, well, that, that's a waste. Because then I'd have two CPUs and I only really need one. And I don't have a limitless budget. So, yeah, let's see which one of these do I use. Just going to use some screw terminals to uh, hook up the wires into so that, you know, I, I don't have loose wires lying around on the desk because, uh, as I said, if that red wire, that white wire, or that blue wire hits a, hits a ground, that's not going to be good. Um, well, it won't really be, like, catastrophic uh, disaster. Well, it shouldn't be a complete disaster because uh, this being a very low-gauge wire, it's going to have a pretty high amount of resistance to it. But uh, if that wire goes to ground, it's going to get very, very hot, very, very quick. And I'd rather not smell burning PVC, um, you know, rather not have the whole room smell like burnt PVC. So yeah, let's just get that mounted up. And uh, these. So for the memory sticks, I'm using the T-Force uh, Extreme from Team Group, as usual, because I don't really have any other, well, no, I do have other memory, but this is, uh, this is the only B-Die I have, so, yeah. Um, I need a screwdriver. The wire's all hooked up. How long is this? This is 21 minutes. Well, YouTube is going to be impressed, but I think the people watching aren't. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's get you. Uh, this is gonna suck. Okay, that's calm. That's good. It's gonna run a. Which we have the CPU installed right now, which that's going to make it inconvenient. So I'm just going to pull the CPU quickly. And I'm just going to check that the terminals are hooked up. So I'm just going to, I know there's a capacitor up here that I can stab. And if we stab this, zero. Cool. So basically I'm just checking that the screw terminals are hooked up properly. And let's get the red ones hooked up. And that blue wire is, uh, is that going to reach? Come here. Freaking tripod. I need way more. Should, I should jump into a vat of radioactive waste and hope to grow extra arms. <laughs> Would make my life a lot easier. Uh, come on. Yeah, I did not think this through. I forgot that the... Uh, I should have had the blue wire longer. Yeah, <laughs> it's running the longest distance of all the wires, and it's the shortest one. Great job, me. Okay, well... That wire does not want to stay here. But, uh... There, uh there's a capacitor for SOC that I can measure. That's not going to be a problem. I'm just going to put the multimeter here. Oh, it actually, yeah, you can kind of read it. Um, so if we measure from here, from the terminal to there, come on, that should be zero. Yeah, it's zero, so that's hooked up as well. Cool. Um, and now we just need to hook up the proper V-core lines, and everything shall be good. That's, uh, yeah, that's hooked up. It's not going anywhere. I'm, I'm, it's not like I'm going to pull on it a ton, so don't worry too much. And I'm just going to check the V-Core again. 
zero, ground is, let's see, against uh, zero, and this one is zero. Just gonna do a quick, sh wait a minute, yeah, okay, that's not shorted out. <laughs> Cool, so that's all hooked up, so let's put that in voltage mode. I'm just gonna, uh, which one? I'm just gonna go against the, actually, okay, why? I've just realized I don't have nearly enough desk space here, but that's what, you, what happens when you put two systems on the desk, so really only my problem. Uh, um, I'm just gonna add a bit more thermal paste, assuming I can even find where I put the thermal paste. There it is. As usual, just thermal grizzly cry not. Go. That'll do. And let's get the AIO mounted up. The HDMI cable out of the way. How's this caught on? There. Stupid freaking fan wires. Go. Freaking tripod. I swear, I need to figure out some way to get like the cameras to just float in midair. <laughs> That's basically what I need to be able to work. Because the cameras are just standing in the way everywhere. Also, I have lost some of the mounting hardware for this, so, yeah. The hard drive plugged in, I mean SSD. So, I just have Windows 10 on that. 8 pin, go. And the 24. That should be, oh, and the fan, well, the AIO header. Really want this melting down on me. So, come on. Stupid SSD. Where do I put this? Yeah, there's not enough space on this desk. Get in there. So that's done. Um, now we just need a GPU. HDMI. That's going to totally end up in the radiator, isn't it? It'll be fine. Mouse plugged in. Actually, that's the keyboard. Still, mouse now. All plugged in. Where's the power thingy? Power button. Turn on the power supply, and I assume I've wired everything up correctly, so it should just work. I don't smell smoke, <laughs> so now we wait. Yeah, it's, it's working. I do believe there might be an over, like a pretty aggressive overclock on there right now, so it might not post. And yeah, looks like I'm, I have an opportunity. Oh wait, nope, it's working. Yeah, okay, realize that uh, it's been torn down. Cool. So there we go. Uh, system's working. Let's just go into advanced mode. OC. Uh, we are not loading up that profile. Uh, settings. Right. Where does MF? I've forgotten how. Uh oh no, are we at stock? Yeah, okay, we're at stock, so I'm just gonna dial in a quick overclock and then we're gonna get our uh, voltage measurements. Get the mouse out of the way. Oh. Okay, um, CPU ratio of 39 because I'm lazy for stability. Um, digital all power. I'm just gonna, let's just leave it on auto for initially. And we're going to go through the rest of the LLC settings, but I will lift the overcurrent protections 
Um, I'm going to leave over, under voltage alone, over voltage off. Uh, core voltage, I want 1.425. Uh, NB, I want 1.2. DRAM, I want 1.5. Um, DRAM frequency, we're just going to start with a basic B die overclock. So I'm just going to go with uh, 1, 12, 12, 12. Well, ah, wait, right, right, this is rising, so that's going to be now 12. 26. And 12. And there. That's what I'm going to go with for the uh, initial settings. missing anything? No, that should be it. I rather like the BIOS on this motherboard. Very quick. Very responsive. It's something like even Asus boards don't get right is like for some reason their BIOS is just like laggy. Really, really laggy. And I find that absolutely infuriating. Um, there. See? It fires right up. And now we're just going to throw some Cinebench at it and check out the Voltage situation. So I'm just going to put the multimeter. Can you actually see the multimeter or should I bring it up closer? Uh, damn. <laughs> yeah, so this operating system. I was overclocking earlier today before doing this video, so that's why it's going into startup repair. We're just going to skip right out of that. hook up the multimeter and we're going to start with the V core voltage. Um, so let me just get this. There, and if we check vCore right now, um, you can actually see we're pretty much dead on. It's 1.422. Um, so, very. So, there's no droop right now. And let's open up Cinebench and run. And that is really good. I'm impressed. Like, we're, we're on auto LLC settings, and this board is holding that voltage rock steady I, I i'm like i yeah i'm impressed i actually like legitimately very impressed with that and uh yeah so that's solid um let's just check what the software says because that's what that's the other thing there's motherboards where you measure them and in reality they're extremely stable and very very solid but then you, uh, then, then you check your software voltage readings and it's just bloody all over the place. So this right here is the vid reading, which is basically the, the voltage that the uh, CPU is requesting from the VRM. It is not the real voltage, so we're going to have to scroll down for that. CPU core voltage right here, which I am just remembered I've not put a fan on the VRM. So if we keep running Cinebench for long enough, that'll eventually overheat. Um, <laughs> let's just run. And we're... Yeah, that's 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 really solid. That's that's like dead on. Um, motherboard is reporting 1.43, so that's a bit off because we can clearly see that the socket is at 1.414. But the on die sensors, so the ones actually in the CPU, they're reading 1.425, 1.40, 1.4. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that is that that's solid. That's definitely very, very solid. So that's a great voltage reading right there. Um, so yeah, um, you, you can totally trust the software on this motherboard um, to like, I don't know. Well, we, we, we'll, we should still check out the, some, some of the other LLC settings. But uh, I'm just going to check uh, here. You can see, yeah, and this is what the VRM outputs, right? So if we go under load, that's the actual, that's, that's what's coming right out of the VRM. That's not behind the CPU socket. So that's why we're reading a higher voltage, because there's some voltage drop across the actual power plane 
um, and that's fine. And it's just basically if you're uh, if you're trying to measure your voltage, don't uh, measure it off of your VRM because you're going to read something that's way higher than reality. Um, so yeah, so V core is uh, solid. Let's see the SOC voltage. I'm not sure how you're supposed to load up the SOC. And SOC is reading 1.8. Yeah, 8.6, uh, and if we run this, I wonder if it'll actually change. Okay, so it does drop a little bit for Cinebench. I imagine if you put a heavier memory load on it, it'll drop some more. But honestly, for, for auto settings, this is really impressive. Like, I did not expect that. I was, uh, for auto settings, I w was expecting like 100 millivolts of droop um, or higher. Um, but th this is holding really, really steady. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. I like this board. And actually... Um, just realized something. Let's check the V core under load, but against the um, against the actual ground of the VRM itself. So just to there. So that's again the VRM output right now. And yeah, you can see that the output voltage of the VRM is like 1.5 volts. So that's if you measured across one of the capacitors up here. That's what, that's what I'm measuring right now. Um, and if we measure the actual back of the CPU socket, you can see that we're actually getting something a lot closer to what we've set. So, yeah. Um, let's go into the, I don't know, should I bother with the rest of the LLC settings? How many minutes is this? This is 36 minutes. <laughs> I don't think anybody cares at this point. Um, would you like to save your benchmark score? No, it sucks. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I, I mean, I, I feel like wrapping it up here. Um, I mean, I could go through all the other LLC settings. Actually, let, let's, let's do that. I, I just want to check if, uh, I'm just going to set it to the highest possible LLC setting, and we'll see if that one massively overshoots. Because um, that's, that's something I'm always interested in, is like, how ridiculous do the top LLC settings end up being? Because on some other boards, you just get ridiculous overvoltage when you use it, so... Digital all power. Okay, so this is something I actually find absolutely infuriating. <laughs> there is no standard for which of these means what. Like, if we're on an ASRock board, that's going to be the highest one. We're on an MSI. I assume MSI, uh, MSI is logical and 8 is the highest value. Uh, I'm not going to change the Northbridge um, SOC, so let's try that. And start measuring. Actually, this seems to be low. Wait, is auto, auto like, do they seriously have the, no, it, it does seem to be drooping. So this seems like this setting is actually worse than auto. That is interesting. So I guess one is the highest then. So th these guys also run the ASRock school of, yeah, that is drooping a lot. So yeah, this board has uh, the ASRock school of LLC labeling where one is higher than eight. Lovely, great, awesome. Um, renders image, nope. Wait, I misread that. Let's restart. So let's just get into the BIOS again. Mash that delete button. I mean, subscribe button. Actually, do both. <laughs> Digital all power. Um, let's see. So, based on that, mode one should be the highest. Now I'm scared because honestly, for mode eight, if if mode eight was supposed to be drooping, I was expecting worse. So, is mode one just gonna? Oh my god. Oh my god. We just, like, we're not even in Cinebench, and we were doing, like, 1.4. Holy hell. We're going to see, like, 1.5 volts. That's ridiculous. Let's do this. Okay, it's not that high. But, yeah, that, that gives you overvoltage. So, based on that, I'm going to say you probably want mode 2 or 3. 
Because mode, mode 1 definitely overvolts by like uh, 25 millivolts. Um, so. This isn't taking that long, so let's try that out. Now, I've seen some motherboards where if you set the LLC high enough, it, it's a lot worse than 25 millivolts of overvoltage. Um, so that's not actually that bad, but that was scary because honestly, I'm, I'm not sure how much window, how much load Windows 10 startup is. And basically, the way the the load line works is it is a uh, a function of how much current is the VRM outputting, and the voltage regulator will comp like raise the output voltage uh, accordingly. So if Windows startup was only like uh, 50 amps and then Cinebench is 100 amps and we were seeing plus 25 on Windows startup then we'd see plus 50 on uh, on load with Cinebench but okay well that's silly mode 2 so yeah plus plus is uh, <laughs> okay that is a uh, that's a bit silly in the BIOS but it's not bad I mean the nice thing is you can just leave it on auto and it's, it's fine um, as far as I'm concerned. We're getting a little bit of voltage boost right now at idle, right? And then, and now it's really steady, I think. Yeah, so mode two looks like a uh, bit more aggressive than auto, but. Okay, now that's, that's still boosting. By 10 millivolts this time, but definitely still boosting. Well, 12 millivolts because we. So if we ran a heavier workload, like say Prime 95, it would actually boost even more. Um, Cinebench is not the heaviest thing for Prime 95. This would probably crawl up to 1.4, 1.45 maybe ish. Um, no. So. Looks like I was. Uh, looks like mode three is going to be flat. I'm hoping it's flat. Uses screw terminals, doesn't screw them in. Oh well. Uh, digital. And let's go one more. But yeah, that is a really stupid LLC configuration menu because if you press plot, like if you just uh, press the plus button, it sets you to mode one and then mode two and mode three. So you're you're raising the mode, but it's lowering the amount of L like the it's. Uh, Actually, no, no. If you look, went by the very literal definition of how LLC is supposed to work, you're technically changing, you're, you're setting a higher, uh, higher um, uh, load line resistance. Um, but that is confusing. To the end user, that is confusing, as far as I'm concerned. Even if you can logic it away, because basically what the the load line setting would be like, mode eight could be like, um, how much was it dropping? It was dropping like sixty millivolts, so that would be like 0 0.6 milli ohms, and now it's rock steady, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, so that would have been like 0 0.6 milli ohms for uh, for that amount of droop, and then mode seven would be like 0 0.5 milli ohms, and right now we're at I think, I think we should be at zero. Um, because we're not seeing any droop at all. So yeah, and then then uh, then mode two and one would be like negative point uh, uh, point uh, two milli ohms or something because it starts boosting upwards. So like if you went by a very very like if you went by the very like if they had the if it wasn't called modes but it was actual milli ohm settings then that would actually make sense but since it's modes and it's kind of arbitrary it's just it's it's a bit of a mess but hey auto is not bad and mode 3 is definitely very very steady um, let's just check with prime 95 just just to put more load on it uh, prime 95 small ffts this is going to overheat probably, so give me a. Okay, so it's boost. Actually, yeah, it's rock steady. So mode three is uh, is, is the best. Definitely want to use mode three, because that is like one millivolt above what we have set in BIOS. So that is 
Yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm like, th this is a good board. Um, re well, relatively good board, and I just didn't shut down Prime 95 properly. But, uh, yeah, if you have this board, set your LLC to mode 3 and never, never, never worry about it. It is a bit confusing that mode 1 and mode 2 are technically higher than mode 3, and then, like, mode 8 is the worst, uh, is the most amount of e-droop, so, like, yeah. I, I hate how there's, like, no consistency in terms of, like, how to name your LLC settings. Like, well, no, actually, um, if, they, if they used actual words, like, high, medium, you know, extreme, very extreme, that, that, I think, is hard to be confused about most of the time. Though I guess you could say it's extreme V-droop, and then have the voltage dive down by 200 millivolts. So... Yeah, that's that's just annoying. But there, it, now you know. Now now you know what the what, what the different modes do, and the voltage reading accuracy in in the software is is good. So, yeah, um, I like I'm happy with that. It's not a huge achievement, but there's a lot of mo motherboards out there where you 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 check your physical voltage against the software, and you find out the software is just straight up lying to you. Like it is reporting who the hell knows what measured from who the hell knows where. Or it's not even about where it's being measured from. It's about like the the, the actual what, what the software actually translate how the the software translates the readings is not correct. So it like the the actual chip that's doing the voltage reading it knows exactly what voltage you're at. Then it tells the software and the software misinterprets it and you get something that's completely wrong. Um, so yeah, but th this is this is good. Like I'm I'm happy with that. The voltage readings are um, basically spot on. And the LLC isn't like if you just leave the LLC on auto, it's good. If you if you want to get it completely flat, you set it to mode three and it's flat. If you set it to mode one or two, it's going to boost, um, which you don't want. So yeah, um, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Oh, huge thanks to the patrons and everybody who donates to the the channel because without you, I wouldn't have this board here. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support what I do here uh, with actually hardcore overclocking, there's a Patreon, PayPal, shirts. Uh, you can find a link to all of those down in the description below. And uh, see you next time. And I've just noticed that the audio levels for this entire video suck. I think my lab is running out of batteries. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs>